And that was Vincent Koshtel, who's from the UNHCR in Washington, and a refugee lawyer who demanded the closure of the Nauru Detention Center now once it reopened in the light of the government's plan to send children to Malaysia. Well, Marion Lay was a strident critic of the Howard government's Pacific solution because of concerns about the treatment of asylum seekers, and she joins us now from our Parliament House studios. Marion Lay, thank you very much for coming in today on ABC News 24. If I can start by asking you, the UNHCR says that some countries do have transfer protocols that meet their approval. In your view, is this what's needed in this deal? No, I think it's, um, you know, we've really hit an all-time low when we're talking about trading in people, and basically that's what we're doing here. It's not just a simple matter of transfer that the government's talking about. They're talking about trading people, 800 people to be returned, um, and then we get 4,000 uh, from Malaysia as a result of that. Now, clearly the UN um, would want to see 4,000 recognised refugees resettled here, and I would certainly support Australia um, increasing its intake. We can do that, but we don't have to do it in, in the way in which um, the government is currently proposing. If the government says it clearly does not want to increase its intake, what then is the solution if they are going to go ahead with this Malaysian solution? Well, they've said they will bring in an extra 4,000 out of Malaysia. But the, the problem about, uh, re, you know, having people return to Malaysia is that we don't know the situation um, that they're going to be held under in Malaysia. And the biggest um, concern now, of course, is, as the UN had pointed out, the return of children. We know that children are trafficked. We know that people do send children ahead sometimes as what we call anchor children. And in other times, they're just totally, they've been, you know, um, left um, bereaved reft of their family, they've been traumatised and now suddenly we re-traumatise them again and send them back to a solution that um, is open-ended and which we and the UN presumably will have no way of um, tracking. Would the human rights situation in Nauru be any different if, for example, the Nauru solution was reintroduced? Look, what I'm suggesting is rather than um, the government just, you know, sort of grasping the air and bringing up the Timor solution or the Malaysian solution, that, all right, we have another look at Nauru. If we're really so um, concerned about having offshore processing, Nauru in itself is not a bad place to be. Um, the problem with Nauru was that there was a lack of uh, access for any kind of legal advice. Human rights um, experts were not permitted to go there. Um, and people were processed and then left in limbo for up to four years. And that's clearly something we need to avoid. A lot of people, particularly on the left of Labour, are very concerned about the way the asylum seeker policy is heading. What do you think is going to happen after this? Do you think the government will be forced to scrap this deal? Oh, I, you know, it's not even a fait accompli yet. We've seen that Malaysia's still putting up arguments. I mean, Julia Gillard plucked that so-called solution out of the air in desperation. What I think she needs to do is to sit down with her ministers or get her minister to sit down with the department, um, with people in the community, with the UNHCR, and come up with a viable solution, a long-term one, and stop all of this um, polit politicising of what are very, very vulnerable people and, in fact, a very small number of people who are coming here by boat compared to those people who come and apply for asylum every day who come in by our airports. But do you accept the government has to do something about this wretched people smuggling business? They do have to send a message. Well, I think that, um, you know, we can do other things than... than uh, exploiting the victims. What we need to be doing, and I've said this for a long while, is working on a solution with Indonesia, with Malaysia, with the UN, and yes, increase our intake, increase the uh, numbers of people that we're processing in those countries, and then we will find that the boats will stop because there is a viable solution. As it is, some people have been granted refugee status by the UN in those two countries, Malaysia and Indonesia, but have remained there in appalling conditions. Um, as we've been seeing in the media in the last few days, they remain in appalling conditions because no country, including Australia, will have them. Do you think part of the problem, too, is that if Julia Gillard does try to go down the Nauru path, for example, the opposition will see that as a win? 
Well, you know, the opposition's been bleating about reopening Nauru from day one. And I think that the problem that Julia Gillard has is that she came in on um, the back of a government that had started out uh, under Kevin Rudd, uh, under Chris Evans as the minister, in closing Nauru, as they'd said they would do. Now, for her to go back on that looks as though it's a retrograde step. But what we've got at the moment is just a nightmare. It's a mess of people being held in detention centres all around Australia. Australia, being held in community so-called detention and being held in Christmas Island, in Villawood, in those places where people are now self-harming, where we've got extraordinary abuses of human rights going on and um, there's no solution in sight. So yes, something has to be done and it needs to be a long-term solution. Um, really, you know, the, the two parties need to get together and stop politicising, as I say, these vulnerable people. Marion Lay, we really appreciate you coming in this Saturday morning on ABC News 24. Many thanks. You're welcome, Jane.